welcome to the lecture on mums. This lecture will take you through an introduction, the problem statement of mums, its epidemiological determinants, transmission, the clinical features and the prevention. Mumps is a widely prevalent disease all over the world, its burden being higher in countries where vaccination against mumps is not offered routinely. Remember, it is a vaccine preventable disease. It is an acute infectious disease caused by RNA virus belonging to the paramyxoviridae family. This virus has a high predilection for glandular and nervous tissues. In most parts of the world, the annual incidence of mumps in the absence of immunization is in the range of 100 to 1000 cases per 1 lakh population, with an epidemic peak occurring every 2 to 5 years. A natural infection with this virus is thought to confer lifelong immunity. As you can see here, even in our country, outbreaks have been occurring yearly on a yearly basis in different parts of our country in various states. Going on to the epidemiological determinants of mumps. The agent causing mumps is a myxovirus parotiditis virus which is an RNA virus belonging to the myxovirus family. There is only one serotype of this virus available. Both clinical and subclinical cases are the sources of infection and subclinical cases account for 30 to 40 percent of all cases. A person is infected four to six days prior to the onset of symptoms to until a week after. Just before and at the end of onset of parotitis is the time of maximum infectivity. Once the swelling has subsided, the case is regarded as non-infectious. The secondary attack rate with mums is pretty high it is estimated to be about 86%. The host factors, it is most frequently seen in children between 5 to 9 years of age. However, there is no gender preference. One attack, be it clinical or subclinical, is known to induce a lifelong immunity and most infants below the age of six months are immune because of the presence of maternal antibodies. Environmental factors favoring the disease. It is largely an endemic disease. Higher incidence is usually seen during winter and spring. However, the cases can occur throughout the year. And epidemics are usually more common in overcrowded areas as this facilitates the faster spread of the disease. The infection is mainly spread by droplets and after direct contact with an infected person. The incubation period ranges from 12 to 25 days. It's usually between 14 to 18 days. As you can see in this picture, the virus gains entry into the body through the respiratory tract and it grows in the salivary glands and the local lymphoid tissue. In around 7 to 10 days, it starts spreading to the spleen and the distant lymphoid tissues and by 15 days, viremia has set in. With that, the virus starts spreading throughout the body to the testis, ovary, pancreas, thyroids, the salivary glands and so on and the disease starts manifesting itself.
the clinical features in 30 to 40 percent as already told it is clinically non-apparent in clinically apparent cases pain and swelling in either one or both of the parotid glands is the most common an individual can also present with earache on the affected side prior to the onset of swelling Please also note that sublingual and submandibular glands can also be affected. A person can also present with pain and stiffness on opening the mouth. Along with this, there are other constitutional symptoms as present with other infectious diseases like fever and headache. The swelling is usually seen to subside over a period of two weeks. The complications encountered with mums are quite a few, orchitis, oophoritis, pancreatitis, meningoencephalitis, thyroiditis, neuritis, hepatitis and myocarditis. The most common extrasalivary gland manifestation of mums in adults is testicular swelling and tenderness denoting orchitis. A mum's infection in the first trimester of pregnancy is associated with 25% incidence of spontaneous abortion. Coming to the frequency of how these complications occur, how frequent they are. Orchitis and oophoritis, a unilateral presentation is more common, bilateral presentations of the same is quite rare. Unilateral orchitis can be seen in 25 to 40 percent of the affected individuals. Unilateral oophoritis in 5 percent of the cases. Pancreatitis can be a manifestation in 4 percent. Meningitis may be seen in about 15 percent. And a smaller amount, 0.02 to 0.03 percent can end up with encephalitis. And sensory neural deafness is a rarer complication seen in about 5 per 1 lakh population. Moving to prevention, vaccination remains to be the mainstay of prevention. We have a highly effective live attenuated vaccine against the mumps in the form of MMR standing for measles, mumps and rubella. There are many strains of mumps vaccines that are mumps vaccine that is used which includes Gerilin, RIT4385, Leningrad 3, Elzagrab and the Urab strain and then there are many others as well. However, Gerilin is the commonest strain that is used. A single dose 0.5 ml when injected to an individual is seen to produce detectable antibodies in 95% of vaccinees. However, it has to be remembered that the vaccine should not be administered to pregnant women, patients receiving immunosuppressive therapy or those who are severely ill. The MMR vaccine is currently not being given under the national immunization schedule. What is given is MR vaccine. The mumps vaccine along with measles and rubella under the IAP schedule is given as follows. The first dose is given at 9 months of age, second dose at 15 months of age, third dose being given at 4 to 6 years. The route of administration of this vaccine is subcutaneous route. In those countries that have MMR as a routine vaccination process, need to have strategies in place to achieve mumps elimination, which are high coverage of first dose of mumps vaccine, ensuring a second opportunity for vaccination and then conducting catch-up immunization of susceptible cohorts.
surveillance also forms another strategy working towards the elimination of the disease under which there are various definitions. A clinical MUMS is defined as an acute onset of unilateral or bilateral self-limited swelling of parotid or other salivary gland lasting for two or more days and without any other apparent cause. A lab confirmed MUMS is a patient with clinical MUMS and lab confirmation done with mums IgM antibody or a seroconversion with fourfold or greater rise in mums IgG titer or an isolation of mums virus from saliva, urine or the CSF. An epidemiologically confirmed mums is a patient with clinical mums who is epidemiologically linked to a lab confirmed mums case. Coming to control of the infection, control of mumps is difficult as the disease is highly infectious even before the diagnosis can be made. There's a long incubation period and there's occurrence of subclinical cases thus making control quite difficult. However, a case has to be managed symptomatically. The case has to be isolated until the symptoms subside and the contacts of the case are kept under surveillance. With that we end this lecture on mums. Thank you.